Hello, welcome to the KeyInts IX training module. Today we'll discuss how to use the IX's height area tool. The height area tool calculates a matching rate which is determined by number of pixels in the height area of the target. This tool determines if the target is okay or no good by comparing the measurement of the current target to the measurement of the registered master image. High and low thresholds can be set to ensure a target's height area falls within a given tolerance. Today we'll talk about how to use the height area tool in scan mode. In scan mode, you'll first complete your detection setup and master registration. Then it's time to add our height tool. Click add tool, advanced tools, and then select height area. Now press OK. A square window will appear on screen. This is our measurement window. Drag this window onto the feature of the part you'd like to measure the height area of. I'd like to measure the height area of this feature on our demo piece. So I'll go to edit inspection window and select circle to make our tool window circular. Then I'll drag it onto the piece I want to inspect. You can also set a mask over your tool window to ignore certain areas. This is done by clicking mask then add mask. Once your mask is set and you've hit close, you'll see the option to cut the mask. Utilizing the cut mask feature, you can choose a specific section of the field of view to be ignored. For this demonstration, I'll click clear to eliminate the masks I made, then I'll click close. Under height extraction, you'll see a settings button with an eyedropper icon. Clicking this will allow us to extract our height area. Just move the eyedropper over the feature you'd like to inspect and click on it. You'll then have the option to manually adjust how much of the area is extracted by clicking the plus and minus buttons. Clicking undo will undo any adjustments you just made and clicking clear will entirely erase any height extraction you performed. Under advanced settings, you have the option to manually specify the extracted height area. The tool automatically selected our extracted height area to the value shown here. If I wanted the tool to ignore values higher than 22.8 millimeters, I can set our upper limit to 22.8. When I press enter on my keyboard, you'll see the portion measured as higher than 22.8 millimeters has been removed. I'll set the upper limit back to the way it was for now, as this step is not typically necessary. Then I'll click close. You also have the option to select an averaging area of small, normal, or large. You can see visually how this changes the height area the tool considers in its measurement. We'll leave this on normal and then click close. You also have the option to set a reference height, which will adjust the measurement of your height area based on the measurement of another tool. We only have the one tool, so we can leave this off and click close. You also have the option to adjust your limits. This determines the threshold the tool will use to determine an OK versus no good part. By default, the limit will be 70, and the current reading will be 100. This means that a matching rate of below 70 will be considered a no good reading. I'll click test to show you how this works. In test mode, we can view a live image of the sensor. If I remove the measure piece, our matching rate drops to zero. If I put a piece and that's the same height, but a different diameter than the original piece, you'll see our matching rate drops to the low 30s because only the height matches, not the area. If I swap a piece that's the same diameter, but a different height, we get a matching rate of zero because there's nothing present at our defined height area. I'll swap our pieces back as we had them and then click end test. You can also include an upper limit for your matching rate. This is more useful for applications that require a very large tool window or if you're trying to count multiple parts of the same height. For example, I'll increase the size of my tool window to include all three of my pieces that are the same height. Then I'll set my upper limit to 101 and my lower limit to 34. Now I'll click test to show how this works. With all three pieces and we get a value right around 100. If I remove one, we get a value in the 60s because only two thirds of the correct height area is present. If I remove another piece, our matching rate drops to the low 30s because only a third of the correct height area is present. For now, I'll click End Test, then I'll reset my limit settings and reposition my tool window back to the way we had it. In the extended functions, we have more options for our height area tool. First, you have the option to specify your height range, which is the same as the advanced settings we went through during height extraction. Next, we have the option to set a fixed reference area. By default, this is disabled, and our matching rate reflects how much the detected height area matches the height area in the registered master image. By selecting Enable Large, the matching rate will then reflect how much the detected height area matches one-tenth of the total field of view. By selecting Enable Small, the matching rate will reflect how much the detected height area matches one-one-hundredth of the total field of view. 
We'll select Disable and then click Close. You can also rename your tool. We're measuring the top right feature with this tool, so we can name it top right, and you'll see that the name of the tool changes to reflect this. That's all the settings for our height area tool, so let's click OK. Now we can press next to step four, and because our outputs aren't relevant for this video, I'll click complete settings, and then yes. Now that I'm back on my main screen, I'll put the sensor in run mode, and you can see we're able to measure our part and determine a good versus no good measurement. Thank you for watching.